With the release of Chapter 4 Age of War, the Gondun changed the game again. In a bunch of ways, but most notably if you play PvP, we've gone back down to two times harvest instead of four times. It's not too bad, I spend a lot of my time on two times and one times on PvP, you'll get it done. But in saying that, Crystal's pretty important and um, you can no longer harvest it with a pick, which is kind of annoying, as you may only get two when picking out by hand. You can increase that chance by having efficient harvest on that will enable you to get potentially twice as many and as it's a single hit or oh, harvest node now as you can't hit them that'll be very beneficial but as you probably don't want to spend all day getting very minimal crystal at a time by hand it's super tedious not gonna lie there are alternative ways to get shit done we're gonna head on down to shale back hollow and learn ourselves some sorcery in the cave of karak if you haven't been here you essentially head all the way through the cave i highly advise coming in here straight away as soon as you create a character because leveling up sorcery is very handy you'll see in a moment. Touching the tome for the first time will give you a staff as well as your tome of Karak. If you wish to have more tomes you can just drop that one on the ground, touch it again and you can get more, pick that one up again but you cannot get more if you are already holding. I have a separate guide on leveling up all sorcery and that to make it easy but you can jump down here, swim across and uh, climb up, get some fun little starty bits. These things can come in handy for doing some of the leveling for sorcery as well as just generally harvesting stuff about that you can still use tools and weapons with. Sometimes this is a box you need a legendary key for, sometimes it's a broken bag. Just fun com things. Things that are handy but not necessary in our journey to harvesting a lot of crystal a lot easier. And if you play with mods like Age of Calamitous, you can also get your AOC gems this way too. Getting yourself a sorcerer, don't matter what level they are, even a level one will be able to craft you some pages it doesn't decrease the cost it will only decrease the time it takes to craft them collecting fail sorcerers pages will enable you to also craft some spell pages which you need for leveling up these things it won't look like this for you i am in creative mode so i can see all the stuff but essentially we want to get to tier six but we'll come back to that in a moment having a dancer is handy because you're going to need to corrupt yourself a bit at least 20 percent to get the job done and coming back home you can slowly kill yourself of corruption or have her follow you around or him whoever you choose to have having a few cooking recipes and a stove can help because you can get yourself some corrupting brew and some cleansing brew which is going to help corrupt you on the go and cleanse you on the go doesn't matter which bench you have the small stove costs the same amount as the big stove it just has less slots you can also put a cook in there to make the time a bit quicker i do have a separate video on all the recipe guides but essentially i head on over to the summoning place this big red eye in the middle to get cooking recipe one to get yourself corrupting brew then up to mounds of the dead in the little hut that usually has a fighter in it and not much else you'll find cooking recipe three which will teach us cleansing brew but it also teaches us herbal tea which you'll need some of that to craft some of these things cheap way to get up a bunch of iced tea is a visit a couple of the merchants around the map we have one in the location of the volcano buy yourself some iced tea iced tea decays into herbal tea and it's relatively cheap to get that for that silver coin you can also consume yourself a bunch of iced tea which is good for stam but be careful, the enemies there are now enemies and they will attack you, unlike Sepimeru, where you can still come and not get attacked. Head on over to Conan's house. It's also a great place to cure corruption if you don't happen to have that dancer. The dancers here you can tame. It's not them that cures your corruption, it's actually the house. So even if they're dead or not there, this will still work, but it's very slow. Talk to this guy and you can also buy some iced tea off him. But if you're looking to do things the old school way, you're going to need a whole bunch of flasks to make some pure water instead of using your precious crystal that we're working to get head on over to the west wall prison also in sepimero and speak to venor skin flint and for just a few silver you can get yourself a butt ton of flasks i highly advise doing this rather than using your precious crystal to make glass sometimes sumerians and nolheimers drop a lot of glass feel free to use that and turn that into orbs but you might as well do this if you're looking for some quick corruption beyond corrupting brews certain legendary weapons can also corrupt you and uh legendary armor the black feather helm when equipping it will give you half corruption same with things like the ball maker weapons that he drops 
drops and the ones that you can actually craft, equipping them will give you instant corruption. Hanging around in that sorcery cave where we picked up our tome will give you corruption. Using the circle of power to summon stuff will give you corruption also. In a much, much slower way is hanging around corrupted temples like obelisks and places in the unnamed city. And a few other ones like that sorcery cave around the map that I mentioned, one over here at the arena, etc. But you're going to be waiting some time and if you're on PvP, you'll probably get murked doing that. So I highly advise getting corrupt a different way. And you can also control your corruption with using those brews. So they're probably the best. And seeing as they don't expire, you can always keep just a few in your pocket for times of emergency. For cleansing brew, you're going to need that herbal tea and some yellow lotus. And for corrupting brew, the purified water, demon blood, and lotus again. And that water costing a water-filled flask to craft. You do that in a precision alchemist bench or with any form of alchemist can fill flasks much quicker than you can in your inventory holding over water. And you're also going to need an alchemist bench for crafting some cloth pouches for doing our sorcery. Having a alchemist will just make that quicker but not cheaper but you will need him for filling the flasks for those water. For the cloth pouches themselves you're going to need a lot of leather which you can get from either tanning or hacking up dragons with a pick tends to give a butt ton of tanned leather already. Demon blood you can often get from dragons most one skulls, a few of the three skulls, and a lot of the demon kings. I do have other guides on how to get up a lot of those resources quickly, as well as gold and bone dust. Pretty self-explanatory. And again, I have separate videos on how to get up a whole bunch of gold and silver. And bone, you can just hack up yourself if you really want to. Same with getting some leather and tan up your own hide. Put your bone in a bone grinder, or just a grinder rather, and it's pretty easy. Or hack up a skeleton, crocodiles, all those things. Drop a lot of bone using pick. You can also put things like the chitin chitin in there to get bone mill horns etc now we got those technicalities out of the way head on over to your thermagogy bench where you can also skin weapons and armor to look fancy so you can look like me and wear actual stuff you can get sorcery pages by killing sorcerers also as well as doing that crafting that i talked about earlier they'll often drop their own special type of pouch that'll look similar to this open that up and it will drop certain resources we want to go all the way down this list so you're going to need at least six pages and all of those resources. It's not too much, but we want to get to tier six so we can learn mass cull. Now you've got sorcery leveled up to six, head on down to your favorite crystal cave. I am here at Scuttler's Shortcut. Quite a big place and you can't get to a whole lot of this crystal even with hand or a pick before so mass cull was super beneficial anyway and it's going to give us about the equivalent to a deal pickaxe which is sure not as good as what we had before but much better than this nonsense so you're going to need to not be in creative mode have your wand out or not and uh, consume a few brews and we can now right click to consume again because they actually listen to us for once about something get to about 20 percent corruption it gives you roughly 2% or so or 1% per corruption. They change things so often. Now we want to go all the way to the right to shape the forces of raw nature and reality and then we wish to escalate. You will not be able to escalate if you don't have enough corruption but you can just open your inventory and consume while you are holding the wand without it going away. We're gonna escalate. Now we go over here and we harvest and recall mi minerals in the area around the caster. Materials rather. Just harvesting a mineral. This can super lag out servers um so do be careful with that but we got a lot so yeah it's really the only way to do this now if you're not doing it then that's kind of silly and like i said if you're playing on aoc you will also get those aoc gems and now you've done your culling and you don't want to be corrupt anymore just consume some of these consumey cleansy brews and you're back to your good old self i highly recommend coming here with a bit more encumbrance as you can see i'm super full now but i also did get a whole lot of levels as i started off at level 34 or 33 i believe and now i'm a lot higher at level 39 so i actually can put some of those points into my encumbrance to get away with a good old beast of burden but hard worker is also quite handy for leveling just in general for nodes and you definitely want that efficient 
proportioned harvest to get the max amount on that final hit, which all of this is technically. Just as a bonus little tip, most people probably know, but just in case you don't, if you are crafting steel fire to make dragon powder or dragon powder in general, you want to use the precision fireball for your dragon powder as it's the cheapest on crystal and steel fire, but you might as well use an improved one for your actual steel fire, but you don't want to be making your dragon powder in there. It adds up to be a lot more expensive, especially on PvP. So keep that in mind and you can actually place these guys on top of here. So you can end up with quite a nice little bomb production station. Again, putting alchemist in there won't make it cheaper, but it will make it a lot quicker. And now we've got quit stack. That's fun too. I hope you're out harvesting a button ton of crystal again with a much more ease. If you found this information informative, smash that like button and consider subscribing if you're not already. Something like 80% of my viewers are not subscribed. It's to be expected when you make guide videos, but it would be cool to get to 10,000 one day. I, that'd be just the coolest thing ever. I'm a bit of a long way off at only 6,000 at the moment, but we'll see how we can go. I appreciate you all so much. Consider sticking around for the next harvesting video. That'll help you get by in the game a lot better. And until next time, I hope you have an excellent day, evening, night, morning, whatever it may be, wherever you may be, have a good one.